Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes. Alleluia. Easter is a 50-day celebration, so we are still celebrating Jesus' resurrection to new life. I also want to wish any mothers or mothering figures a happy Mother's Day. Uh, in worship today, we will be uh, singing a hymn, and we'll be also having a litany for mothers. So you'll see that's an insert in your bulletin. And the hymn is a little bit challenging, so the verses order uh, is written in the bulletin, but it'll also be up on the screen. You should recognize the tune. And then we'll do a litany for mothers, and that's because uh, we recognize, too, that this day can be difficult for many, for many reasons. So we will be celebrating and also praying. You can see in our bulletin, we've got upcoming announcements and events. Uh, today is Penny Sunday, so uh, be sure during the children's message uh, that children can bring their change forward. There's also a jar in the back if you'd like to put change in. We've been collecting money for uh, Ukrainian refugees through Lutheran Disaster Response. We have a total for the Flood Bucket Challenge. This was a challenge we did in relationship with lots of other Lutheran churches and Presbyterian churches in the area. And the goal was to collect 200 buckets, but we've collected 234. So all through the season of Lent. So we're very excited about that. Um, and we do have some buckets here. So if you know anybody who's experienced some flooding this weekend and needs a bucket, we can give it to them for free. So just let me or Betty Lou know. We got our mother-daughter banquet coming up on Saturday. Uh, so be sure uh, to sign up in the back to get your pictures to Kathy Barnes. Next Sunday is Companion Synod Sunday. That's where we pray for our sister congregations in Liberia, Africa, and in Germany. Um, also, after that meeting is going to be, or after worship is going to be a congregational meeting. So invite all voting members to stick around. If you did not receive information about that, please see me or Betty Lou, and we can make sure to get you the information you need. Last thing is, you'll also see an insert in your bulletin about Camp Mount Luther Work Day. And so if you'd like to help prepare camp for the summer months, you can sign up. You can find out more information there. Are there any other announcements, joys, concerns? Yes. Happy birthday, Mindy. <laughs> Notice how she's sitting so far away from me. <laughs> yeah, I know we're celebrating a, a few birthdays, aren't we? We also got Leicester and Erickson's birthdays, too. So lots of birthdays in May, so... Sandy Kinney, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> anybody else want to out anybody for their birthdays? <laughs> well, if there are no more, um, please rise as you are able. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery, for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and for the sake of ourselves and our neighbors, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We thank you, God, for your life-giving salvation through water, 
word, and the Holy Spirit. In these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. Through Christ's resurrection, you are forgiven. Alleluia. All breathe upon us, Holy Spirit, and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. To you be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. The unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good, that we may do your will and work among us all that is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from Acts 9. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping, and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she got up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. God. We will read the psalm responsively. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over.
Our second reading comes from Revelation 7. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. All of the children are welcome forward for a children's message. We're going to sit in this front pew here today, because we're going to use the screen. I want to make sure you can see it. Morning. Good morning. We're going to sit up here. That way you can see. What, you mean you can sit there too? That's cool. You sit where you want. Well, yes, and bring up your change. Yes. Let me get the bucket. Thank you for <laughs> reminding me. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Let me get the bag. Thank you. So as I mentioned before, we're collecting change, and all of this is going to help uh, refugees from Ukraine. Um, and so for, for a while now, we've been uh, praying for people. They're experiencing, are we, are we good? Okay, good. So they've been experiencing um, war, and they've uh, had to flee to find safety. And um, so actually, I want to share for the children's message today, we're going to share a video. And this video is uh, from a group called Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. And what this group does is it helps those people who are fleeing, who have to leave dangerous places to protect their family. And so we're gonna watch a video, and it's kind of interesting because you're gonna hear it, it's actually a lot of people are speaking Ukrainian. And so the text is gonna be up there. If you can't read it, that's okay. There's some English in there too. And we're gonna learn a little bit about this family who had to leave Ukraine. And they came to the US uh, to be with their family here. So, if you can make sure you can see. Было особенно страшно, когда они жили в Ирпене, город такой, что они в подвале сидели с детками. У меня такое, я так переживала, он и муж, и все. Я ночью лежала и плакала. Кого мы ждем? Самых дорогих. Без слез не могу. Нам, благодаря вот сотрудникам АСЕНТРИ, вот и Оле, то и любые вопросы мы обращались, никогда не было отказа. They are regular refugees. They were filed through the Lautenberg program. They got approval back in 2021. All the time on the phone with their mother who invited them here because they had to wait that long for their flights. I see there is email coming, flight is scheduled. There was so much joy. I felt like it's my sister's coming here. 
что мы это, уже тут на месте. Это как вот, когда война началась, первый день вообще, типа, да, и быть такого не может. Ну, как эта война Даже началась? понять. Мы думали, это за три дня как-то закончится, и все. Ну, мы бы, конечно, первое мечтали, чтобы дети наши больше не столкнулись с войной, потому что вот они такие маленькие, и уже ощутили, что такое война, услышали. А тут хотелось бы, чтобы наши дети получили хорошее образование, создали хорошие, крепкие семьи и были счастливыми гражданами Америки. Чтобы, чтобы они были свободными. Вот. Uh, so yeah, we just heard a story of this family coming and um, being able to find safety. And so these real families who are trying to find a safe place for their families and their children. And so I just wanted to share that with you and to thank you so much for collecting this change for them. So let's pray. And we'll end our prayers with we love you and we praise you. Amen. All right? Let us pray. Dear God, we ask that you be with all Ukrainian families and children to keep them safe. We thank you for these gifts and ask that they would help those in need. We ask for peace soon. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. I appreciate it. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, oh Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 That verse says the good news so simply. Yet sometimes I wonder 
after doing a quick scan of all of the different types of Christians, all of the different ways to believe and things to believe that are sometimes opposing one another, I begin to wonder if we're all reading the same Gospels. Are we all talking about the same good news? Are we all talking about the same guy, Jesus of Nazareth? And that's not even taking into account all of the things that we're not sure of about our faith or about Jesus or when we struggle with doubt or when we or loved ones don't believe or are unsure as well. It seems like, regardless of what I say or what others say, the debate about faith and what we believe never ends. And the same was true in Jesus' day. In the Gospel of John this morning, Jesus is in Jerusalem teaching and healing And a group of Judeans ask him to speak plainly, to tell them if he's the Messiah, the Son of God. But earlier in the gospel, Jesus has told them who he was. Jesus answers them, I told you and you do not believe. Jesus had also performed miracles and healings like making a blind man see. Jesus told them, the works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. Jesus' words and works are open to many interpretations, and we struggle to communicate clearly what we believe or to share our faith with others. Maybe that's because there are so many different flavors of Christianity. Which one is right? Does only one have to be right? Maybe we struggle to say what we believe because we're not even sure, or we're worried we'll say something wrong Or as I was taught, it's not polite to bring up religion in public, polite conversation. We don't want there to be conflict or fighting if we don't know what other people believe. That same tension exists in the Gospels, and the whole Bible for that matter. There's a tension between what Jesus proclaims and what we proclaim. And maybe that's because we rely too much on our words and not enough on God's words and how we respond to these words. In our reading from the book of Acts this morning, we hear about the disciple Peter raising Tabitha, or as she's known in Greek, Dorcas. She was a woman who was well known for her generosity and talents of making beautiful clothing for the widows in her community. Dorcas first heard about Jesus from Philip, the disciple, when he came to share the good news in her hometown of Joppa. A new community was being formed of believers. Dorcas spoke two languages, Greek and Aramaic, hence why she has two names, Tabitha and Dorcas. And she used her gifts and means to give beautifully woven clothing to widows who were experiencing poverty. Now, widows were typically outcasted by everyone else in the community in Jesus' day. They had no means to repay her, 
yet she gave the best that she had freely. She lived out Jesus' good news by loving others in her own special way. So when Dorcas died, her friends sent for Peter, and he came to attend her funeral where many widows were weeping over her, the same widows who received her beautiful clothes. They were showing each other and Peter the clothes she had made them as they grieved. Dorcas had woven a community where there was none before. She served a population that was often forgotten and created a community around grief and compassion. There's nothing about what she said to them, what she said about her beliefs. The good news that Dorcas shared, the good news of Jesus Christ, was in the clothing. To those widows, Dorcas's beautiful clothing was the good news. It reminded them that she cared about them. Her clothing reminded them that God cared about them. And to anyone else watching, it was evident that Dorcas was motivated by her belief in a Savior who loved her unconditionally, who loved her lavishly, and then she did the same for those most in need in her community. And when Peter witnessed this, that she was sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through her good deeds, he, through the power of the Holy Spirit, raised her to new life just as Jesus had raised many people to new life throughout the Gospels. Words can fail us at times, but actions can speak much louder than words. Sometimes the good news of Jesus Christ isn't spoken at all. Sometimes the good news is a warm hug or a warm meal or a handmade work of art made for you with love, no matter how beautiful it may be. The only words we really need to rely on are Jesus' words. The Good Shepherd tells us that we belong to him. It doesn't matter if we can't perfectly explain our faith or if we doubt at times. Jesus promises My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. The voice of the Good Shepherd frees us. We already belong to the Father. No one can take us away from God. Secure in our identities as children of God, we are free to live life abundantly and to share that abundance with others. The abundant life that Jesus offers us may not be abundant in years or wealth or status or accomplishments, but it is a life abundant in God's love made known through Jesus Christ. Christ's love for us overflows to others. Our eternal life comes from our eternal God, and in Jesus there is resurrection and renewal. In the midst of all of the other voices out there that can frighten or oppress or command us, the voice of the Good Shepherd is a promise. We are called by name and we are claimed as gods forever. Amen.
Please be seated. This Mother's Day, we walk with mother-like figures and families in a myriad of ways. <coughs> to those who recently gave birth, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss this year, through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with disappointment, we walk with you. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers recently, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. Let us pray. God of grace and strength, thank you for all the mother-like figures in our life. Be with us in our celebration and our sorrow. Amen. Please rise as you are able. We now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys be with those fleeing violence and war in Ukraine, Afghanistan, and all other war-torn countries. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love 
from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy. In our prayer. God of wisdom, thank you for all teachers. Provide them with guidance and strength as the school year comes to a close. Be with the Sunbeam teachers, staff, and board as they work to minister to children and families in this community. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Seek out those who weep while they await hearing or consolation, especially Dale, Donna, Angela, Jason, Elaine, Beth, Denny, and Ruby, and all others we now name. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. Be with all those affected by the coronavirus. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And fold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Be with those who are dying. Comfort those who grieve. Wash us in your saving grace every day guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another, however you feel comfortable. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and Dorcas and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Amen. Please be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please receive the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. We will. Amen.